So I want like three attributes from current players okay. to match up with one draft. So we're building basically a, a Voltron. little Voltron, a mini Voltron. Okay. Uh -huh. All right. Well, the player comparison, the guy that I want to start comparing other pros to is Baker Mayfield. Okay. Now, Baker Mayfield is, of course, the undersized, very accurate quarterback from Oklahoma. So let's start off with his arm. Baker Mayfield's arm. It reminds me. You guys ready to tweet me? Drew Brees. Okay. Now, here's the thing. Now, Drew has had injuries. He's had surgeries, had procedures. Even still, he's one of the more accurate passers in the league. And the reason I do see those similarities is because he's willing to sit in that pocket. Now, even though Baker Mayfield has good footwork, he can tighten it up, and we'll get to that next. But the size, though, Drew Brees, a little bit taller. He's not your 6'5 quarterback, but he's above six foot. But he's not the tallest quarterback in the world. But when you watch him in the pocket, he almost elongates himself so he can see over the line of scrimmage and all the chaos coming at him. And when you pay attention to Baker Mayfield in the pocket, he does the same thing. He starts to make himself stand up a little bit more upright so he can get rid of the ball. And here's the thing. Regardless of what you want to say about his size, he can make every throw in the book. We're talking over the middle on the sidelines, comebacks, moving the stakes, even the short routes because he does have that touch, which is what Drew Brees has. All right, now let's move on. The footwork. Everybody's talking about the footwork, the footwork. And I couldn't go as far as saying he's Russell Wilson. I couldn't go as far as saying he's Tom Brady. But he does remind me of a guy, a guy that I know well, and that is Matthew Stafford of the Detroit okay. Lions. Now here's the thing. When I first played with Stafford, he was young, and he had that gun. And he was sitting in that pocket. He would pat it on feet. He always wanted to get rid of the ball to his wide receivers. And he felt like he can make every throw in the book. And that right there is Baker Mayfield. But more importantly, what I love about Baker Mayfield, once he starts to rise up in that pocket as it collapses, he doesn't feel the need to run. And Matt Stafford is very athletic, very underrated part of his game. He could take off more times than not, but he wants to get the ball out of his hands into the playmakers. It's the same thing with Baker Mayfield. He wants to get the ball out of his hands into the playmakers. All right, now, one last thing. Now, I wasn't going to go one more physical trait. I want to do something a little bit different. So I feel like Baker Mayfield has the camera presence of Cam Newton. You see what I did? Okay. A little Cam on Cam. Now, Cam dresses like the most swagged out dude in the league, right? He has the shoes and the look and the hats and the glasses. Baker Mayfield's not that yet. I mean, I see him on Total Access. He's rocking the Chuck Taylors, and I can respect that. <laughs> but what I do love about Baker Mayfield, as soon as he's on camera, there's something about him. He is oozing with confidence. And it's not just the Heisman. It's not just him playing big in the big moments. It's actually who he is. <laughs> we put the little hat on top hat. of his head, and that's him. He doesn't care about what you think. Have you ever watched him? And we've seen Baker Mayfield a ton. And you start to think to yourself, why are you so nonchalant? He's nonchalant because he's not swayed by how you feel about him. He knows who he is. He's completely confident who he is who he is. And that's Cam Newton. Cam Newton will sit up there. And he'll just sit there and think to himself, I don't care what you think about me. I know I'm the man. And that's Baker Mayfield. Are you a little in love with Baker Mayfield? I feel like you're a Baker guy. I'm a you Baker a, guy. I'm have you Baker been there guy. all along or is this a little, has it developed? No, nah, I, I was a Baker guy when he had to bounce back from some of the stupid stuff he did in college. And he did it with humility and he did it on the field. And then backed up what he said Everything you and everything you did. So I'm a Baker guy right now. I'm a Baker guy right now. I love guy. that. All right, I'm a Sony Michelle gal yes, you are. through and through. This wasn't easy. We're going in the in the production meeting. Who do you want to talk about? Sony Michelle. He is the guy. And he has some attributes. I know that he's constantly compared to Alvin Kamara, but there's a reason for that. So let's start there. And the attribute I think that translates the best is the burst. That's what we're talking about. You look at Sony Michelle. Last year, 7.9 yards per carry. Last year in the NFL, Alvin Kamara his rookie season, he led the league in yards per carry. They're very similar in that respect, and I love that. Alvin Kamara catching out of the backfield, something that we didn't really see Sonny Michelle get a chance to do yeah. at Georgia, but even Mike Mayock saying, hey, he can catch the ball. Melvin Gordon, a guy who didn't catch the ball in college yep. and got to do it when given the chance and the opportunity in the NFL. That is important. So the burst of Alvin Kamara. Like I mean, what do you make of those comparisons? They're everywhere, but they're, they're true. They're so lofty, they're but it's true, right? I mean, he put up 7.9 yards per carry mm -hmm. last year in the SEC is insane. Okay, I love that. The burst of Kamara sounds good. Okay, I'm going to move on to pedigree. He has the pedigree of Todd Gurley. Ooh, Same school. You sure look does. at Georgia. 
It's a factory for running backs, is it not? Your Herschel Walkers, your Hall of Famer TD, heard of him? Of course you have. Yeah. And then you look at a guy like Todd Gurley, a Georgia guy. Uh, he doesn't have the size or the speed of a Todd Gurley, but I'm just talking about the fact that he has the potential mm. to pan out like some of these guys. Lofty expectations, absolutely. But when you are in the same conversation as a TD, as a Todd Gurley, as a Herschel Walker, and you are the number three all-time rusher for that school, yeah. that says something in and of itself. This isn't some small school without a running game. And not to mention, you are number three all-time rushing for Georgia Competing, not competing, yeah, but sharing the backfield yeah. with another guy who also had a great season. So that, to me, the pedigree of Todd Gurley, uh, I think he has that in his favor. The last thing is, I'm going <laughs> to, this is so ridiculous. I want you to take a look at the spirit fingers of Kirsten Dunst. Do you guys remember Bring It On? Yeah, it's course. all about spirit Love fingers. Yeah. Uh, and this matches up because it's an attribute that he has taken from her to use in the end zone. If you take a look, this is my favorite celebration already. Is that his name? Oh, I love it. Look at that. what he does. Every touchdown. Just a little spirit finger. He little does a little bit of that, and he says it's a way of saying it's not really on me. It's bigger than me. Good. So it's oh, not, like it like goes from him to the outside. Where he's like, like I'm kind of good. It's not about me. Nah. Nah, nah. I like that. I it's like about that. everybody else. It's about the offensive line. It's about the rest of the team. It's about his partner in crime in Nick Chubb. Yeah. I love that. That's a celebration. So oh, that's awesome. I put that in there. That's awesome. I feel like those are the things that you need to know. You need to know that's, that's a, a celebration. Kirsten Dunst. Yeah. Love her work. I like that pool love right it. there. Mm -hmm. <laughs> spirit finger. Spider Man. I forgot I was doing that. I'm that was good. Seconds ago. What do you got? What a kiss. <laughs> <laughs> Monumental kiss. Um, <laughs> All right, we got Josh Allen's pro day today, and I'm fascinated by Josh Allen. I've been studying up on this guy. I love how everyone is uh, projecting him as this giant, great, his story is so cool. So I'm gonna do Josh Allen, and I'm gonna explain Prior to his pro day, what I would say is the makeup. Let's just start with the arm. It's like Paul Bunyan, the way people talk about this arm. Yeah. He's got the arm of Joe Flacco. And if you remember Joe Flacco coming out of college, he was at Delaware, had put up crazy numbers, and everyone said, don't know if he could compete at the next level because of the competition, but his arm is amazing. Sure enough, he goes in the first round, he wins the Super Bowl, he's won the Super Bowl MVP, and he's one of the greatest postseason quarterbacks of all time. Flacco's arm is what he's best known for. Josh Allen also an enormous arm. If you remember Flacco going against the Denver Broncos in the divisional round in the yep. Super Bowl season, he had to make a play on third and long, and he throws it deep, and he throws it over Raheem Moore, Jacoby Jones, yep. takes it for the touchdown. You need to have that kind of arm when you're playing in Denver or when you're playing in Cleveland. When you're playing in New York, all these teams at the top of the draft that need quarterbacks or might be doing quarterback moves, cold weather cities. I love that Flacco ended up in Baltimore. It made a lot of sense in the AFC North. I think Josh Allen belongs on one of these teams in the Northeast or the Midwest where it's cold weather and he can use that cannon. All right, so that's one thing, the arm. We know about that. It's yeah. amazing. How about the college career of Josh Allen? It's very interesting. He went to Wyoming, so he didn't go to one of these major power conferences, and he didn't go there. But he didn't, like, win every title either. Mm -hmm. They struggled at Wyoming. They only went 8-5 and five in their division. They were not one of these powerhouses. Every time they played the big teams this year, they got blown out, and Josh Allen did not play outstanding. Which brings me to the college career of Phil Sims. I'm going back in the look at the old Sims shots. Hey, Sims. this is my guy, Phil. Oh my goodness. This is this is Nate Burleson's colleague on the NFL right Today. Here, this guy used to work at Inside the NFL here. But before all that, he's one of the greatest quarterbacks to play, and certainly one of the greatest quarterbacks to play for Big Blue. But Phil Sims was a first-round pick out of Moorhead State. All right, tiny Moorhead State. It was Division One A. Before that, it was Division Two. Do you know what Phil Simms' record as a starter, as a senior was in 1978 for That's Moorhead so State? What's that? Two, six, and one mm. at Moorhead State. Two, six, and one they went. And yet, here he goes. He threw more interceptions than passing touchdowns in college. But because of the arm, because of the makeup, he still went to the seventh overall pick in the 1979 draft. Besides, despite being... Two, six, and one at that? Moorhead State. That's so wild. why is that a similar story? Here's Josh Allen. And in recent years, we've seen Carson Wentz win all these titles at the small level. Yeah. We've seen Joe Flacco at the smaller yeah. school yeah. level win titles. Josh Allen didn't really win much right. at Wyoming. They weren't that juggernaut. Some say it's a knock. And some are knocking him, yeah. saying, well, there's no way if he couldn't win at Wyoming right. when he was playing up against who knows what, why will he be able to win against the See Steelers in cold weather? To me, Phil Simms is the blueprint. Yeah. You don't have to win in college at these small schools. Mm. Look what was around Josh Allen. 
There's no one getting drafted this year on the offensive line or a wide receiver for Wyoming. I watched these games for Wyoming. He is running around like a chicken with his head cut off, or in his case, a giant monster with his head cut off. Right. He's so big. There was not much talent around him. I'm giving Josh Allen the benefit of the doubt. I'm saying it's Phil Simms as the, as the prototype. He can still go in the top ten despite not a tremendous winning career right. at the small school. And my last one, you might not think of this player when I talk about Josh Allen based on appearance or maybe the physical build, but his story – Coming out of high school, it reminds me a lot of Khalil Max. Hear me out here. Khalil Mack played high school football in Florida. Did not Florida, think you were going this okay? way. Played high school football in Florida, was a great player, the whole thing. No one recruited Khalil Mack. All those schools, Miami, South Florida, Central Florida, Florida State, Florida. Got no, he got one recruiting letter. It was from Liberty out in West Virginia. And then he got one recruiting letter saying, hey, you can come and check out the University of Buffalo if you'd like and play here. He goes to the University of Buffalo is absolutely unbelievable, sacks Ohio State quarterback three times in a game and ends up going fifth overall. A Florida kid going to Buffalo. Why do I say that's Josh Allen's story? Josh Allen was a, a player in high school in California, Fireball, California, small town. No one recruited him. Yep. Nobody. He wrote handwritten letters to every Division I school saying, I'd like to play for you, I'd like to play for you. No one picked him up. He goes to junior college, plays okay, and then gets one offer, Wyoming. One offer only, Wyoming, and ends up there. So where Khalil Mack comes from, a football hotbed in Florida, has to go to Buffalo where he got an offer, and then go on to NFL superstardom. I look at Josh Allen, grew up in California, no one recruited him, has to go to junior college, writes letters, ends up at Wyoming from California, and then will be a top 10 pick. I love Josh Allen's story. Grew up on a cantaloupe farm. A cantaloupe wild. farm. I love cantaloupe, and so I love Josh Allen.